All right, so I've lately been using the wave texture a ton to create looping animation, specifically in geometry nodes, but I use it in the shader editor as well. So today I wanted to show you how the wave texture makes the life of a motion designer so much easier and speeds up the workflow. So first I'm gonna show you how to work it, how to use it, and second I'm gonna show you how to create this animation from start to finish. It's a really nice looking fun animation. So we will get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real-Time Materials, a collection of customizable procedural materials compatible with Eevee and Cycles. This add-on will speed up your workflow, allowing you to stay creative while maximizing your artistic output. Real-Time Materials are loaded with custom properties, giving you the freedom to change roughness, color, and all kinds of patterns. You can change the shape of wood, the direction of cloth weave, and the size of scratches, among many other parameters. Even if you already know how to make procedural materials, imagine the time you will save if you could apply those materials in one easy click. So I have this icosphere here in Geometry Nodes and I have a set position because I want to displace the icosphere. Now don't mind these little nodes right here, they just make the displacement work, but if you plug the wave texture into the offset, it's going to displace the icosphere. Now, why not use a noise texture or a Vorno texture? They can all do displacements in this concept. Let me show you why this is really special and a huge time saver. I'm gonna go back to frame zero and keep your face offset at zero. What you can do is hit I to add a keyframe, go to the very end and specify an even number. The larger the even number, the faster the animation is going to be. So in my case, I'm gonna click here, type in 12 asterisk pi or 12 times pi, and then I'm gonna add the keyframe. Now, if I go right here, if we watch, it'll go back to the beginning, you can see the loop is seamless. It's a seamless loop, it's perfect. And we looped it that quickly. And if you've been watching my tutorials for a while, you'll know we used to take noise texture, noise texture, run it through a little bit of a process. And now if you use this when it's appropriate, it makes your life really, really easy. So let's build on this really quick. So now what I can do is just throw an instance on points here and then get an icosphere and plug that into the instance. And now we have something we can work with. All right, similar setup here, but in this case, the icosphere has a cylinder instance on it. So same thing, icosphere, but we're not displacing the icosphere. It's actually staying the same and we instanced these um, cylinders on those points. So this is the instance on points and I actually wanna take this part right here, the scale and randomize it. So again, don't mind these nodes, we're just, it just allows us to work properly. We'll plug the wave texture into the scale. And then now we can use this map range and specify the scale here and it loops perfectly, which I did here. And it's 16 asterisk pi, enter, and it's now animating this component. And when combined together, you're getting a really, really cool animation. So when you're displacing things or moving things with textures in uh, geometry nodes, and you wanna just run gun work quickly, and it works really nice, use the wave texture, because it's a very quick thing. It doesn't always work the best way, but I've been using it so much, and it makes my life really easy. Now, let me show you how to create this animation from start to finish so we can actually have something to cool to walk away with. All right, so we're gonna start in a blank document. I'm using Blender 3.6. We're gonna hit Shift A and get a plane. Let's hop over straight to geometry nodes and we're gonna get a new node tree. Shift A, search, Icosphere. We'll just plug that right there and we're gonna bring the subdivisions to two. Now let's go ahead and displace the Icosphere. So let's go ahead and get a set position node, plug that there. Let's go ahead and get in a wave. Let's get our trusty dusty wave texture and we're gonna plug that right here into the offset. Now you can see it's behaving really weirdly. It's not really displacing outward like it normally would with the displacement modifier. So we need to harness the normal so it knows to go outside outward for the normals and that's gonna be a multiply. So we're gonna get a vector math node and it's gonna multiply it against what it's doing essentially. So we're gonna go from add to multiply and then we need to get in a normal so we can actually say, hey, use these normals and multiply it against it and now it's actually animating outward. And then what we can do is just duplicate the multiply and use it as just a way to actually scale this displacement. And then if we play, play with the phase offset, we have that. So let's just go ahead and loop this. I'm gonna bring my radius here on the icosphere at 0.7, just bring it in like that. I'm gonna hover over here and get a timeline and go to the timeline here in your preferences. Go to the animation tab and make sure your default interpolation is set to linear. Now what we can do, phase offset to zero, hit I. I'm gonna keep it at 250 frames, that's just the default. 
we're gonna go back to frame zero. I'm gonna keep it at 250 frames, just that that's the default and I like it. I'm gonna hit I here on the phase offset, go to the very end, and I'm gonna type in 12 asterisk pi enter and then hit I again. So now we have this. What we can do now is get any instance on points. So I N S T instance on points. Let's get our icosphere and then plug that into instance. Bring up your subdivisions, bring your radius down, and now these guys are performing the way they need to. Let's just go ahead and get a set shade smooth node. Now everything is smooth. I'm gonna go back to the layout preset, shift A, and let's go ahead and get in a cylinder. Let's give the vertices at 64 and bring your depth up to something like this. What I'm gonna do now is bring this over and then in your preferences, uh, go ahead and enable the bool tool. So B-O-O-L, enable bool tool add-on. And that's gonna make this next part very easy. So I'm gonna hit Shift D here. In the transform settings, I'm gonna go ahead and scale them up like that and then click and drag on Y and X and bring it in to something around here. And then hold down Shift, click Control minus, and that's going to make a Boolean, right click, convert to mesh, and that's going to apply that. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that Boolean. Here, we're just gonna go ahead and add in a bevel modifier, and we're gonna bring that bevel to something like this, and uh, shade smooth, and then we can bring that profile, profile down a little bit to make it work properly. And there we go, that's our object. And then now I just wanna mess with this um, anchor point, so I'm gonna hit tab to go to edit mode, we're gonna go and bring this up till the anchor point is closer to the bottom of our object. That's gonna make geometry nodes a little bit better. I mean, more of a seamless experience. Let's go back to here. What we need to do now is go ahead, I'm just gonna hit shift. I'm gonna click on this guy here. I'm gonna hit shift D to get another object and then right click. We're gonna go back to geometry nodes. See this where it says number two? Just click that and that's gonna create a new node tree. So now I can just go ahead and delete this icosphere, delete the icosphere object, and we're just gonna plug icosphere right into points because we're not gonna displace the icosphere this time. What we need to do now is go ahead in the outliner, drag the cylinder into here, and we're gonna plug geometry into instance. And they're gonna do that, and it's just, it, it's not gonna look proper. First off, they're going up. We want them to point outward, so we need to activate those normals again like we did in the other node tree. So we need to get in a normal node and a align Euler to vector. And we're gonna use the Z axis. So plug normal into vector and plug rotation to rotation. Now it's doing what we want. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and scale these guys down to be a lot skinnier and then this one to be a little shorter. And then what we need to do is actually, I wanna control how high or far out those guys look. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy the scale there. You're gonna need that in a second. So let's go ahead and get that combine X, Y, Z. And what that's gonna allow us to do is just focus on the Z axis. See, we don't have any connections here. It actually allows us to have a connection. So let's plug the vector there. And then we need to get in a map range. Plug that into Z. And then right here, click and drag and paste that scale in there. And that's so that we can uh, keep it the same. And again, wave texture. So plug wave the color into the value. And then max, you can see. So now you gotta play with your min and your max. So bring these guys out a little bit, maybe bring these guys down. Something like this. I do want it to be relatively extreme so that the animation looks nice. So now we have this. Let's go ahead and animate that really quickly. So we're gonna go to the end, go to here. I'm gonna hit I, go to the end, type in 12 asterisk pi. Add that, and now we have this. And now you can't see your sil your spheres, and that's because they're not really going in and out the way we need. They're not going, uh, they're not scaled drastically enough. So we're gonna take this multiply and bring them out. And in fact, we need to scale the radius. We need to get the radius of them high up like this. And then we need to actually scale them out. And now, it's animating properly. Now all we have to do is worry about materials. So let's click on this guy, add a set material node. Let's get a new material. I'm gonna type this, I'm gonna call it random. 
and then select that random and then click on these guys. Set material, get random, and now we can head over to the shading tab. I'll kill these two windows here, and then I'll click on this one where the uh, material is actually sitting, and let's go ahead and get in a color ramp. Plug that into the base color, and we're gonna get three colors here. Now we're gonna get a noise texture. Plug that here, and let's go ahead and get in a object info node and plug in random. What that's gonna allow us to do now is harness these colors. So let's go ahead and pick our three colors. I'm gonna go ahead and go with a nice blue. I'm gonna hover over here, hit Control C, and then hover over here, Control V, and I'm gonna go down for darker. And then this guy, we're gonna do the opposite, kind of a cream color. And then on linear, we're gonna to go to constant because I don't want any color, some, you know, I guess color bleed. I want them all to be, you know, I want that color to be solid. So now you can see it affects the spheres and the cylinders and it looks awesome and bring our roughness all the way down. Now we have the shading figured out. I'm gonna hit the tab and go to the front. We're gonna get a plane right here. I'm gonna bring it, you know, considerably far back. And then I'm gonna hit RX90. I'm gonna hit the tilde key, it's right above the tab key. I'm gonna go to the front. Click on camera, control, alt, zero. Snap that camera to view, and it didn't do it the way I wanted, but that's okay. Click on the camera in the outliner. Go to the little green camera icon, and we're gonna do a focal length of 100. I'm gonna hit G and middle click and get my framing the way I want it to look. All right, while we're here, I'm gonna hit the period key when I select this so we can origin point this guy. What I wanna do here is one more piece of animation. We're gonna get an empty, a plane axis, and I'm gonna scale it up till we can see it. I'll click this guy, hold down shift, click this guy, and then click this guy. Control P, object, so that's the parent menu. So what we can do now is I'm gonna to go to the end and go to frame zero, go to the transform settings, click and drag on those keyframes and then click and drag here, 360. And now it's animating uh, three different ways. It's really cool. So now that we have this, let me take that, uh, that plane and scale it up to fill it. We're gonna go to the uh, render view and I'm gonna go ahead, new, and I'm just gonna give it kind of an orange color, maybe closer to red. Okay, that's nice. All right, so let's go ahead and get our lighting. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to polyhaven.com, just a bunch of free stuff here. We're gonna go to the HDRIs and I'm gonna type in auto. We're gonna click on auto shop and then go ahead and just download the 4K EXR. Here I'm gonna click on the world icon, color, go to the environment texture, open, and I'm gonna go to my desktop where I put it and we're gonna click on auto shop right here. So now we have some lighting, but I really wanna get some more highlights, some brighter moments here. So we're gonna hit shift A, get a light and get an area light. I'm gonna hit G and move it up. I'm hitting G to kind of move it around like this. And then hit R twice to point it. Then I'm gonna scale it up. I'm gonna give it a power of 1000. And then we're gonna bring the spread down till it's just focused on our object here. And then we're gonna go ahead and get another one of these guys, one of these lights. I'm gonna hit Shift D and move it down to be kind of a key light. I think that's what we would call it, kind of a key light here. And then now we have some highlight moments. And what I wanna do now is just hit Shift A, get a point light and bring it back to here. And then bring up the power to like 500, maybe, oh, 5,000. Cool. And now we have that highlight back here, maybe 3,000. So now we have emphasis back there. And then click on the little camera icon, scroll to the color management tab, and we're just gonna go to high contrast. And this is what we're working with. We can bring that exposure down a little bit too if we want. All right, so let's just go ahead and render out a frame of this uh, for your render settings. I'm gonna keep it at 300 samples, light paths, click and drag, go to one and turn off caustics here, and then render an image. All right, so this is our beautiful rendered image. All I'm gonna do now is uh, turn on motion blur, and then let's go ahead and just render this guy out. So go ahead, I'm gonna stick with 1920 by 1080. I would recommend uh, creating a folder and we're gonna render as a PNG sequence, and you can compile that later. But if you just want Blender to give you a nice MP4, 
We're going to go from PNG to FF MPEG, uh, FF MPEG video. Can't talk today. We're going to go to MP4, medium quality to perceptually loss us, render, render animation. And when you're done, you're going to have an animation a lot like mine. I hope you learned something here. Uh, the wave texture is just really awesome. I love it so much. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.